that. Friday! Yes! If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who isn't nowadays in this day and age? Now? At this hour? But only real fans, true hardcore fans, who've been with us since the beginning, since episode one, all the way back in 1983, when we were a just a, a, a leaflet at that point. Yes. We've since grown into a multimedia. We were a very popular leaflet, though. Yeah, we were not. We were not. We it, when we first started the podcast, it was in it was a uh, it was chick tracks, but podcasts. Yeah. So many, and and you you'd find our podcast in like gas station bathrooms. Yes, but you have to admit that we were innovators in being the first garage podcast. Yeah, yeah, very much and, so, and. What is more remarkable is that was before the internet was invented. Yeah, we're really pioneers. Yes. Oh, pioneeros. Uh, but, o- but only real, true, hardcore fans who've been with us since the beginning would know the, the two facts about the both of us. Two undeniable, really real, and in no way made up on the spot facts about America's hottest podcasting couple, Bunny and Steve. First and foremost, Bunny, is that you have a successful career working for Mattel, the toy company, and I've always been jealous about that. So tell us, Bunny, what made you want to start designing Barbie clothes? Um, It was her impossible figure first. Uh, you know, that was it. But, but before that, I was designing clothes for a, a barrel full of monkeys. And yes. that is what got my start in making, making clothes for Mattel toys. Uh, going over to Barbie, it just seemed to be a, 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 natural, a natural thing, you know. Um, look. G.I. Joe sometimes needs shore leave, you know? Word! Barbie needs to be looking good, you know? Yeah. You know, well, I mean, I mean, what does Barbie do for a living? How the fuck does she afford a Malibu beach house and a Corvette? I mean, please. The truth is out there. <clears throat> and it's, it's all in the clothing. Uh, Barbie goes for a lot of fishnets and garters, you know? Yeah. Uh, but will not shy away from a nice bustier, you know? She prefers flat heels, and with as hard as she works, she deserves it, you know? Yeah. Mm Yeah. Mm Yeah. And the second fact you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So what I like to do in this segment of the podcast is find a story from the history books, maybe one you don't know that well, and reword it via my own unique storytelling panache. And so that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of Steve's Historic Approximations. Dun, 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 dun. Or shap, as I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Personally, I like the name shap, and for those of you playing along at home in one of those very popular Pope on Film fantasy leagues, they're so popular, the Pope on Film fantasy leagues that people do out there. You know the player that everyone loves to draft? Genie. She, I, she, she has always been just the most popular draft pick in the Pope on Film fantasy leagues. Yes. Anywho, for people <coughs> playing along at home, it's spelled capital S, capital H, capital A, small p, because it's approximation, A-P. So if you're spelling shap, be sure to spell it correctly is what I'm saying. And so today, on the old Shappity Shap Shap, we will be discussing 
a British TV show for teens with an ending so batshit insane that it rivals waking up in bed next to Suzanne Plachet. Okay. Now, first of all, I love Suzanne Plachet's last name because it sounds like the sound you make when you're 10 years old and you throw a huge rock into a pond. Yeah. Like you're at the park and there's a pond there and it's like, hey, I found this brick, of this concrete brick. I'm going to throw it in the pond. Let's see what noise it makes. Plachet! Yeah! I may have been high when I wrote that. I'm pretty sure I was high when I wrote that. And secondly, for you young viewers out there, uh, and if uh, my wife is watching this, please get me food. Wherever you guys go to get food, and I know you're going to go and get food somewhere because you're in Midwest City, and that's where all the food is, please pick me up something. If, if nothing else, while you're at Costco, get me a hot dog. I love their hot dogs so <laughs> much. Anywho, uh, for, the, for the young people out there, uh, so Bob Newhart had a TV show, and it was called The Bob Newhart Show. It was wildly popular. It ran for six seasons, and most, if not all, of the episodes ended with Bob in bed next to his wife, played by actress Suzanne Plachette. Yes. Back in those days, in like the 70s, it was, it, I think, a, a number of sitcoms in the 70s and 80s, it became a trope where it has to end the same way. Yeah. Like, like, Welcome Back, Cotter always ended with uh, Mr. Cotter saying a joke. Yeah. Mork and Mindy always ended with Mork talking to the, the fucking high elder chief priests, whatever. And when I think of Bob Newhart, I think of him in bed next to Suzanne Plachette. The Bob Newhart show ended in 1978, and in 1982, Bob Newhart starred in a new show, and that was just called Newhart, and that show lasted eight seasons. I didn't realize that it was on TV for that freaking long. Yeah. It, eight seasons, and although it was popular, it still existed uh, in the Bob Newhart show's shadow, you know? Yes. But it was a fun show. That's where we got. That's where we got. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Yeah, they were they they were the breakouts. Show they was were worth like it just for those guys. Yeah, they were the fawns of the show, the oh, breakout, the show. star character, yes. Latka. Yeah. So, for the finale of New Heart, which aired on May twenty first, nineteen ninety. They went in a very strange direction, and the entire series ended with Bob Newhart waking up in bed next to Suzanne Plachette, revealing that all eight seasons of Newhart had in fact been a dream that, ex that happened in the Bob Newhart show verse. Yes. That that uh, that is still like one of the best show endings ever. You know they're probably making better yeah. Dallas. It oh, was they one were of definitely the making yeah. fun of Dallas. Yeah, but, it was one to, of the wildest. To get Suzanne Plachette on it, and the yeah. set looked fucking exactly. <laughs> yeah. Everything looked exactly right. That like the yeah, film stock. You yeah. know. Looked exactly the same. Yeah. It was just beautiful. Well, yeah, the ending to the show New Heart was one of oh, the yeah, wildest. It definitely hit on, on multiple levels with Dallas and everything else. And Suzanne Plachette looked good too. She yeah. looked good. Yeah. So the finale of New Heart was one of the wildest endings to a TV show this side of St. Elsewhere. Which also had a bizarre, bizarre ending. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that one, Bunny. It was all something like a kid looking into a snow globe or something? Yeah, it was all, it was, the entire show existed 
in a autistic boy's dream fantasy. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, the TV show Sane Elsewhere was a science fiction TV series that pondered the impossible question, what if there was a TV show where Denzel Washington worked with fucking Howie Mandel? Yes. <laughs> the, the weirdest pairing in the history of mankind that will definitely never happen again. Well, so, well, have you was. ever seen the movie the called The Man? Mm-mm. Okay, so, okay, so, revving up for Big Ham for the little lady, you just put down Denzel Washington and Howie Mandel. I can beat that okay. with the movie The Man with Samuel L. Jackson and, and George... Eugene Levy. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I th I think I win that pot, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, whenever anybody talks series finales, I am of a generation where um, Suzanne Plachette will always be brought up. Yes. Oh, The Sopranos is ending? Gee, I can't wait for when Tony Soprano wakes up in bed next to Suzanne Plachette. It's yes. a go-to for people. Of my demographic. Well, move she over! Is, she is the electric boogaloo of show endings. Yes, yes, very much so. I try and not do electric boogaloo. There's a lot more sequels out there. Yes. So, move over, Suzanne Plachette, because this chap is about a British TV show called Biker Grove. Okay. Biker with a Y. B-Y-K-E-R. Grove. Um, that is an area of Newcastle. Kind of like uh, Scottsdale okay. is, a, is a, like a suburb of Phoenix. So Biker with a Y is, a, is an area of Newcastle. Um, this was a drama, and the finale for this series put Suzanne Plachette to shame. So let's talk Biker Grove, Biker with a Y. It was a teen-oriented drama series that aired on BBC One for a ridiculous amount of time. I, I think it's interesting that in England, oftentimes it seems like, oh, here is a comedy series. We'll run it for two seasons of five episodes each, and then we'll wrap it up. That was a good comedy, and we all had a laugh. Oh, here's a drama about poor people in Britain. Let's run this for 47 years. <laughs> you know, the dramas get so much longer in England, but comedies, like... We will give you a small amount of time. So I think that that's interesting. But Biker Grove, a teen-oriented drama series, it aired on BBC One from 1989 to 2006. So a couple of generations of British uh, people grew up with this gripping teen drama, and it played right after school. It started at 5, 10 p.m., and it was about these cool young British teens who would go to a youth center after school. That's the name of it, Biker Grove. That was the youth center. Okay. The rec center that they would go to. Originally, the kids were real young, like 8 to 11 years old, but uh, after that first season, they decided to bump the characters up to, like, between 12 and 16. So the show could primarily focus on their growing up from kids to adults. And fun fact, a ridiculous amount of people between 1989 and 2006 got their start on this show. And a lot of the names that I saw were like, oh, blank, got their start on this show. And they're all names of like British celebrities that I would never know. Then I saw a shocking one. A young Charlie Hunam got his start on Biker Grove. 
Charlie Hu Nam, the star of both Pacific Rim and The Gentleman, which is a movie I freaking love. <laughs> love The Gentleman. Fletcher. That's it. Ah, love that movie so much. So, yeah. Uh, Biker Grove, half hour teen drama. It, I don't know either show. However, I would liken Biker Grove to, say, the English equivalent of Degrassi High. Okay. You know? Like, yeah. here's a teen high school drama that's been on for a long time. Drake was in a wheelchair. So, it, Biker Grove had 344 episodes, which is a staggering amount of episodes. And again, this is a serious drama. This wasn't some cheesy comedy. It was very heavy drama. The, the show, there were episodes on homophobia, abortion. <coughs> One character died from a brain tumor. A gay kiss in 1994 got parents all riled up. One teen got pregnant. One fell off a roof and got paralyzed. So his character was just paralyzed for the rest of the episodes. Uh, very serious. Uh, there was an episode on drug addiction. One character stole a car and got arrested. Another character another time stole a car and went for a joyride and accidentally ran over another character. Okay. So this damn show was high drama. And so the big question is, it's 2006, we're ending Biker Grove. How do we end this? That's the, that's the big question. How do you end such a serious high, uh, high drama show oh, such oh, as oh, oh, Biker oh, oh. Grove? Oh, can I guess? Yes. Kaiju. Kind of. Almost. Okay. The writers of Biker Grove went in a slightly different direction for the December 10th, 2006 series finale. The teens learned two things in that episode. One, that the youth center was going to be closing and it would take a fortune for them uh, a fortune to keep the rec center open. And number two, the, the teens in Biker Grove learned that they're all characters on a TV show. Okay. And then the T-Rex attacked. <laughs> okay. And then the teens learned that since they're just characters on a TV show, if they just get a piece of paper and start writing what happens to them, then it happens on the show. Okay. So, oh, it, like, it, it, this, this can't be right. Let me see. Suddenly, they were confronted by a zombie who tried to eat them, and then a zombie shows up and tries to eat some of the Biker Grove kids. No! I saw that scene. Saw the okay. T-Rex. And so they say, well, it would take a fortune to save the youth center. So they get a piece of paper, and they write that they find a treasure map. So they follow the treasure map, which leads them to pirate gold. Okay. Which they then used to keep the youth center open. They ended the most serious TV show with a wacky comedic Goonies finale. Yeah. It's like if it's like if the series finale of Lost was exactly the same as the episode that aired, except right in the middle was a great race style pie fight. Yeah. Or 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 if Dynasty was taken over by Muppets. Yeah. Yeah, like crazy. If the it's like if the finale of Mash was heavily clown themed, <laughs> yeah. you know, go in a different direction. But that's not all. Okay, so a T Rex attack. So the characters realize that they're all characters in a TV show. A T Rex attack, a zombie, the treasure map. They find buried treasure. They save the rec center, and everyone's cheering. And they're like, "We did it! We saved the rec center!" Turns out someone rigged the rec center with explosives. It explodes, 
and everyone dies and fucking credits. <laughs> wow. Wildest series finale of all time. Wow. Move over, Suzanne Plachette. The series finale of Biker Grove from BBC One absolutely has Suzanne Plachette beat. And to this day in England, if there's ever a season finale of a show and it's odd or it's disappointing or whatever, British people would be like, yeah, that was weird, but... Do you remember the ending of Biker Grove? <laughs> and then every, all, uh, you know, websites and news outlets will be talking about, like, sure, that episode last night was strange, but let me remind you about Biker Grove. Yeah, so, uh, infamous. So I, I, I have questions, though. First, like, how did, how did the fans receive that? Everyone was upset. Everyone was pissed. Everyone, Everyone was, pissed. was like, what the fuck did we just see? But they so weren't like, pissed because, like, they're why? British. So they're like, oh, I object to that. You know. Why? Why did they decide to drive a stake through their own show's art? I, the only thing I can think of is that after 343 episodes, you just go fuck it. Yeah. It's kind of like lost in a way. Like, you had so many, by the end of the show, you, you somehow wrote 300 different plots. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit, now we have to wrap all of this up? We're not going to do that. We're going to wrap up what we can. And these guys just said, like, shit, like, we've been doing this show for freaking from the 80s to the 2000s, how do we wrap all of these plot lines up in a meaningful way? I don't know. Pirate treasure, T-Rex, everyone dies. Yay! So I, how, I applaud how long, have, how long have has like this particular group of writers and such been working on the show? I mean, because no they've been working on it since the fucking 80s. Yeah. I can see getting to really detest all your characters in that amount of time. Yeah. But I really had to uh, really emphasize that this was a very serious drama. Yeah. A very, very serious show. Because it, they went left field for their finale. In a way, you're like, yeah, I hated that, but also... I gotta give you a golf clap because the balls yeah. that you have to make this insane ending, fucking good on you, mate. You know? <laughs> Shit. Damn. You got balls as big as church bells. Yes. Uh, so, so yeah. So that's it for Steve's Historic Approximations. This week, be sure and join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun. And cut on that. Say that again? And cut on that. One more time. <laughs> and cut 